I have this morning received a letter from the Secretary of State which I wish to draw to the attention of the House. The letter reads as follows. It was with very great regret that I made the order this morning to suspend the devolved institutions in order to stabilize the current political situation in Northern Ireland. It was clear that it was not for the time being possible to hold together an inclusive power sharing executive since the confidence within the community necessary to underpin it had broken down. Nally. Yes, my son. I'm just arriving here at Parliament Buildings. How are you? My name's Eamon Malley. I've been working as a political journalist here in Northern Ireland for the past 30 years and witnessed the endless quagmire of inertia that has been the history of this place. How are you doing, sir? How are you today? The collapse of the Northern Ireland Assembly is just the latest crisis on a long and difficult road. Thank you. Reporting politics is my way of life, but I'm also passionate about art. And when the Good Friday Agreement was hammered out here at Stormont and the two communities finally had the opportunity to come together, I felt this historic watershed should be captured in paint. It's more than 80 years since an artist last recorded a momentous political event here, in 1921, when King George V and Queen Mary came to Belfast to open the very first Parliament of Northern Ireland. William Connor was commissioned to capture that occasion for posterity. picture portrays a parliament which was supposed to represent all the people. In reality, nationalists were largely ignored. The unionists were monarchs of all they surveyed. It was essentially a Protestant parliament for a Protestant people. That is why, 80 years later, in the wake of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, I was convinced of the need for another portrait to make a pictorial record of this generation of politicians because for the first time in our history we were having republicans, nationalists, unionists and loyalists all together in the same administration in a new Northern Ireland Assembly. Relation to that. And therefore I will seek to be as open as possible as I can with the House but it is also my view that when there is a cliff one drives as far away from the edge of it, not as close as possible to the edge of it. And I will therefore be careful. The most important person to convince was the Speaker of the Assembly, Lord John Alderdice. He shared my vision and the portrait was commissioned. Mr. Speaker, uh, events took place at the door, one of the doors of this house, when you were absent. Uh, two members of this Assembly were seen on television hastening journalists and television cameras uh, to disobey the order of entering the house by putting their machines uh, through uh, the uh, check. The artist I chose was Belfast painter Noel Murphy. I believed he had the talent for the task to portray all 108 members of the Assembly in a single painting. The commission took nine months to complete, during which time the Assembly fell. But Lord Alderdice persisted with the commission regardless. He was to become the final subject of the painting at the end of a long, long journey.
when I first got offered the commission, I couldn't believe it. I was actually going to make the painting that I've always wanted to do. And originally, the painting was meant to be 20 foot by 12 feet or 14 feet high. And I had this grand vision of a painting with all the politicians digging the foundations to a new society out in the grounds with Stormont in the background. But from th- there, things progressed and changed and changed into one of the most difficult commissions I've ever been given. This commission was different because of the nature of it. It was more exciting for me than other public commissions could have been because it had to do with the politics of here and the politicians and the whole peace process and a way of engaging with that and making a contribution to it over and above signing a ballot paper. The main difficulty I had was getting a better likeness of these people that existed in newspapers and on websites, which were all flash lit. I wanted to relight them all and create images from that to suit my painting. So whatever took a camera, a sketchbook or a video camera, it was all just tools to get them here. Ideally, I'd have liked 108 of them to come and sit, but it would have taken five, six years to paint them all. As much as possible, I got as many as I could painted from life. So the, the trick was then to light the Unionist side from the left slightly and the, the Nationalist from the right to cast shadows. And it meant meeting them all to keep that same light source. So that was uh, what I was keeping in mind the whole time when I was working with them. The, the notion of it being a camera or a sketchbook is just a process to get to a painting, to speed it along. And I will try again. The question is that the Labour Relations Agency draft code of practice on disciplinary and grievance procedures be approved. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Hey Neil, how you doing? So what's going on? Just fixing up. As I understand it, when Willie Connor was doing his portrait all those years ago, everybody was looking in the one direction, looking at the royal personages. Mm -hmm. Now, he uh, had to realise a device to give a focus and a perspective to to the uh, actual uh, painting. And he turned the politicians uh, looking at each other. Now, will you have to apply a similar device if you're forced with a situation where, uh, if you looked into the chamber, all you see in many cases will be the backs of heads of politicians. The problem with this composition, all the politicians, MLAs, speak through the, the chair. Through the speaker. Through the speaker. So they all turn towards the speaker. So the natural viewpoint of the painter is to sit where the speaker sits. The painter had to be a person who could actually do figure drawing. There was no point introducing this uh, commission to an abstract painter. And that's why eventually I settled on Noel Murphy as my choice of artist to execute such a process. Noel Murphy lives in the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century. He's really not of our time in terms of how he thinks. In terms of this battle plan, in terms of getting politicians into your studio, why is it so important to you to have them in your studio? I basically want to see if they're human or not. I want to see how they get into a chair, get out of a chair, how they sit back and talk to you. And it gives me a, a sense of them for the picture, of where they belong in the picture, and how confident they can be in that picture. Some of them are great parliamentarians, like Peter Robinson, so it'll be interesting to see him sitting in the studio outside of a context that he doesn't know anything about. Okay, so you'd like all, you'd like all the party leaders. I like you the leaders, but will they, will the uh, ministers come with uh, bodyguards and everything? Probably. Would they wait outside the door though? Some of them, in the case of Ian Pacey, for example, now, uh, he wouldn't walk to that counter to get a cup of coffee without <laughs> one or two bodyguards on his heel. That's just the way it is. So his bodyguards would be present. 
you would wonder when he would step down. No, he won't. He won't. He'll die in harness. <laughs> yeah. That's the way he, he would like to go. He'll, he'll die in harness. One of those extraordinary phenomena. Nally. I have this morning received a letter from the Secretary of State which I wish to draw to the attention of the House. The letter reads as follows. The vision of the picture was in a sense to see all these people together in the one room, which is what the whole peace process was about. I was trying to carry the paint in terms of the last four years and somehow live those experiences through that painting. And in a sense, it was to bring some sort of dignity to the chamber as opposed to what went previously. I nevertheless believe the agreement has delivered enormous benefits and points the way forward. I and my ministerial team... Why has he broken that promise as well? He said he would listen to the people and he has ignored them. He said he would listen to the assembly and he has ignored them. Perhaps you'll explain why the last act that he has done as minister has simply reinforced the view that he's duplicitous, deceitful... Order! And... Order! That's a great lengths of Paul Berry there. That is fantastic. Right. A couple of times I've gone down to the auction and I would have always bought pictures just because I liked them, you know? Because I've got about six of those pictures. <laughs> I'm thinking of bumping you off. <laughs> get this one done and then we'll get you bumped off. Yes. <laughs> You wanted to tell a political story as well as, you know, just being an image of, of w what's going on in Stormont. Yeah, it's just been a war politically. Yeah. And I want to bring that element to it. There's two th points to this painting. First, it has to be a good painting, mm -hmm. or an interesting picture, regardless if there was any likenesses. Right. Then the second is the likeness, and then some sense of reality to right. the, the chamber. But we're really stressing with him a sense of dignity, because mm -hmm. you've gone like 30 years of trouble. And it is, there is semi-civilised yeah. atmosphere about yeah. it. And there was a lot of house training from certain people. <laughs> is the purpose of this, Noel, then, to have not just the picture of the assembly, but to kind of storm into the movie as well? Well, I was always going to make a, um, I want to make a, instead of a written journal, right. a film journal. So oh, right. everything that happens like this, I'll be edited into a short film, oh, which I'll show good. during the presentation. And it saves me writing down things. It's a diary. Paisley Jr. Mr. Paisley. The uh, first Deputy First Minister is the Deputy First Minister content that his partner in government has already got third world links with a terrorist guerrilla organisation in Colombia. And does he not believe that this sets a very bad example to the third world? We have a government here established uh, with uh, gunmen in that government. And could he tell the House if the First Minister over the last uh, 72 hours has expressed to him a willingness to remove from government his ministers that prop up Sinn Féin in this government? As long as, long as I'm not in the Sinn Féin benches, am I? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, That's the problem. I have to keep some sort of reality to it. I can't have any Sinn Féin over that side. Right. There's Sam Wilson and Nigel Dodds. Paul was the first one. John Taylor's up with us. I have to get at least one union to stop at the well, top. You know what I mean, I... Stir me out. <laughs> not when we look at you. No? <laughs> that's right. I'm not used to that intensity. All these people look away when I've painted them. Yeah. So it's much easier to relax. Oh. <sighs> I 
call the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Ms. Bree Rogers. Minister Rogers. Thank you. Mr. Order. I ask members who are leaving the chamber to do so as quietly as they may. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, before I make my statement, can I just uh, say that I very much regret that the DUP uh, has withdrawn because the Chairman of the Assembly and Agriculture and Rural Development Committee will not be present. I regret to say to fulfil his duties to the Assembly, to his committee. And no, have you explained to Breach? Five over. I will not be here. Yeah. Well, well, you haven't come yet. You, know. come you haven't been I'm born yet. I haven't been born. Oh, I yeah. thought I was going to no. figure out because anyone looked vaguely like me. <laughs> no, you haven't been born yet. Isn't that right, Noel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, the problem working with all the press photographs, they all look at the viewer. Mm. Yeah. And mm. if technically we're at the back wall, not mm. everybody can look towards us. Mm. The only two people I want looking at the viewer is going to be the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. So then mm. you look at them when you look at the painting. Yeah. And it gives them immediate recognition as being the two yeah. leaders. Yeah. You see, I see he's got all the men in the front line. <laughs> is that par for the course? No. I'm going to try and bring in the women. Good. Symmetrically around it. To, yeah. uh, and it also brings colour at various points in the picture. Yeah. Do I detect that you have a certain reticence or well, reservation about something in, the, in what you're seeing here? I don't, Speak I your don't, mind. Know, I don't know. I don't know who all the faces are, you know. I mean, for the, because of the way the thing is done, the, the, the focus, as far as I can see it, is on the DUP. Is it a problem for you? Uh, I don't, yeah, we need to see the finished painting to No, know. no, no, but you see what you see, like. You see what you see, like. Is that a problem for you at this by looking at it? What would strike me about that painting now as, a, as someone who didn't have a clue about the seating arrangements, the key figures in this assembly were John Taylor, Dodds, Sammy Wilson, and, and Jerry Adams. They are the key. They are the key important figures in that painting. So, what do you do? Yeah. Well, exactly. What do you do? I don't know. It's who arbitrates? Who arbitrates? Mm. Don't like those songs. Don't like those songs. Of course, our opponents would know very well that the background from which I come, the price of being a traitor, is not to get hit over the head with an umbrella at Scarva. The stuff I have to worry about moves at higher velocity than that. Because what my quest is, is a quest for peace. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I know that our society has come through great difficulty. I've watched the blood and the brains on the pavements. I've buried members of my family. So the theory that we, somebody holds a monopoly on pain and suffering is a nonsense. We've all gone through that. And the choice that people have to make is that whether the pain of dealing with those who you formerly fought with or that you detested that much that you would have blown their heads off. Is a choice measured against what your children might go through? And whether there is an opportunity for a future that says it's worth a try? That's the question. I think it is strange that I'm sitting here and the Assembly's in suspension, but then I, uh, maybe I've always been the, the ultimate optimist that uh, this is merely a, 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 an interlude and uh, it'll pass. I mean, obviously it'll be difficult to get to onto another plane, but we'll get there. I actually think that the timing of this is phenomenal, phenomenal, and that all of these people are now indelibly printed in history. But it isn't that long ago you wouldn't have got all of these people in the same building. You certainly wouldn't have got them all on the same aircraft or on the same bus, because I remember experiences like South Africa where there had to be two aircraft, there had to be two buses, there had to be two bars, two dining rooms, there had to be two of everything. We, we went to South Africa and reintroduced apartheid. And uh, we did, it was fact. And uh, here we all are, and no one, and no one, you know, and not, not all literally, uh, if metaphorically, a stone's throw from each other. You know.
Yeah. It's funny you're going to have to South Africa to talk to each other. Yeah. You had four years to... Well, it's, it's unionism going to South Africa, or elements of unionism going to talk to each other, because the bitterness is such that uh, that interaction in a political context is, has been pretty impossible. Oh, we say hello, and how are you, and what have you, but there's no real cut and thrust of, of debate about where our community's going. And, and, and what mistakes it has made and what it make what mistakes it might make and I think that's it's vital. And I think it is probably important to remind ourselves of how far we have come. Not just in the last few weeks but in the last few years. Because when you're in this chamber you often can forget. Um, it is good that on April 10th, 1998, we declared our best intentions to do something different for Northern Ireland. And on the 22nd of May, those best intentions were endorsed by the majority of the people, despite misgivings. Is there anything outside the world of politics which, of which it reminds you? Of the stock market. I mean, it looks like it's huge, which it is actually, but when you're in there, you don't get that sense. The other thing that struck me when I first looked at it was how overwhelmingly male it is. And of course, when you're in there, you realize that too, because I sit on the right hand side of the chamber facing maybe 70 men. And uh, that's what you get here. Who loves him or herself the most, do you think, in this, in this particular portrait to date? Ian Paisley Jr. <laughs> His face is looking at you straight on. He's very statesmanlike. I rest my case. This looks like we've just been voting and we've all just come out of the lobbies and we're all, and that is the only time that people actually start engaging with them, each other because it's the only time you can grab people to do a bit of business. I wish it were like this. I get a real sense of this is a place where I would love to be. Let me tell you, the seating arrangements in this chamber were incredibly important. Just after the referendum, all the chief whips of the, the uh, parties met and down in Castle Buildings where we had signed the agreement and the speaker was of the view that we should come up and have a look inside this chamber. And it was the summer of 98 when Drum Cree had just happened and the place was burning down around us outside. It was a terrible summer. And I, I got this terrible sense that we were coming in here at a very tense moment. And the next thing didn't they all start talking about the furnishings and the colour of the carpet and the colour of the curtains, all these men. And I started thinking to myself, this is amazing. There is a kind of chaos outside and there is a furnishing discussion going on <laughs> inside. And then I thought, this is going to work. Because if they're that animated about the thing all being colour-coded, it was amazing, isn't it, that these are the kinds of things that were focusing people's attention. <laughs> Peter Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. De Bruyne has said that she considers today's proceedings to be a step in the right direction. I don't think that there will be any unionist who will be unclear about the direction that Sinn Féin IRA would want to take this province. Their attitude has been clear. It is uh, seen in the tombstones around this province, the violence that they have presided over as the representatives of armed terror in Northern Ireland. This is the in-laws and outlaws? Yes. Wall of Fame. That is. This is your rogue gallery, is it? But it's because uh, of now the storm is down, it's quite difficult to get a hold of people to photograph them. Mm -hmm. Well, they should have more time, should they not? Yeah, but it's me sort of tracking down where their constituencies and everything are. Mm -hmm. and it was great because they all came to Belfast for it. You have 108 heads there, do you? There's a bit, I think there's 86 at the moment, so I've still to find space for a lot more. I'm going to take Peter Weir out and put Trimble down here. So your eye will go to the... All the knives the, in his back. There was another way of reading it that you all supported him because you're all kind of around him. 
Should we read anything, <coughs> anything into David Irvine being in the middle of the shinners? Um, it's quite hard to find a, a space for who would be here on the right. So I need to bring him forward a bit. And I find that he's got a really good face that I want to concentrate on. Some of the faces are more interesting than others, and I want to use that from a painter's point of view. Jerry Adams is getting a wee bit close to the DUP benches for my liking there. Have um, a barrier need there. to get a, a wall built in there. Uh -huh. Where's Doc? Doc he's he's like, oh, he's going to, I'm going to have him here, <laughs> probably, or else in here. Yes, I see John Taylor's trying to get in on the, the back of the DUP again. He's lost his 42 He takes a sizable off. piece of the canvas up, uh, <laughs> but I suppose you do have to do it in proportion. Then. John Taylor would be lost in the background, and he's got a great face to come up at the front. And he's well, Maybe that's the right image to, to have, and yeah. being lost in the background. Like your designer palette? Oh no, no expense bird. Continuity said that there was a, yeah. a bomb yeah. for 35 minutes, but that's 50 minutes or 55 minutes, so I suppose it's plus a shown. Yeah, as they say around Fork Hill. Yeah. Noel wants to talk a little bit around the studio with you privately, get a look at you, and then he'll start working you into the picture. That's the, the general approach. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I suppose it's preferable if you reserve your comments about what you're seeing until he gets engaged with you, you know. In I'll, I'll do that, Emma, yeah. <laughs> I see you say what you're going to say, anyhow. <laughs> A new politics has begun. It is time for responsibility and commitment that will allow people on the ground to look at this place and say, ah, they are serious. There is a new politics. Not a politic of bittering, bickering. Not a politics of sectarianism. Does it give you an insight into the, the vanities of politicians? Yes. I would have thought it might, yeah. How long do you think this suspension is going to last? It'll last until you get paid anyhow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, the original suspension was January the 18th, but it doesn't feel like it's really suspended anymore. Suspension has almost become a ritual once a year mm -hmm. that people expect it. Yeah. Uh, a bit like Halloween when the terrible happenings happen. But then I can point out those in that portrait who have caused it, mm -hmm. who have actually created the circumstances where that happens. <coughs> Hume Seamus, uh, uh, given his role in history in that, you have, would you have any ideas or opinions as to where he might be located in the portrait? Let me put it this way. When people come to look at this, the first thing they'll see is the DUP. And the last thing they'll see is everybody else. And it's always the last thing that people see or hear that remains in their minds. But I would have thought of John as somewhere off-centre. Uh, in a way that it, it draws people's heads and eyes, uh, I think it would be the most powerful uh, means of expressing that. Now there's the amateur, dabbling painter talking. Where would you put Ian Paisley then in this portrait? Where would you think he should be uh, located? I would tend to, again, put him very much off-centre. Uh, put him 
in such a place him in such a way that he is of it, but not part of it. Uh, now that would be a difficult, a fairly difficult thing in, in terms of composition to do. But I think if you can reflect, as it were, would the fact that Paisley, Dr. Paisley, has been part of everything. He's been in everything for this past 30 years, but part of nothing. Uh, he has always been the guy on the outside of the tent. And we know what people on the outside of tents do. And I think that should be reflected in the, in, in, in the portrait as well. Uh, the Paisley of the assembly, but not part of it. Just the same as Paisley of Northern Ireland politics but not part of any solution over 30 years. I think that'd be a powerful statement of that. How much longer do we have to wait? We have waited three and a half years since the agreement, nearly a year and a half since forming the administration, during which time promises made by Republicans have not been kept during which time violence has continued. And there does come a point where a line has to be drawn or else the community outside will come to the conclusion that this process has, is failing and will not achieve its results. Would you, do you actually go to galleries? Would you visit museums and galleries when you travel? Um, a bit actually, but I'm, I keep missing things in London that I'd like to get to, you know. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm within three minutes walk of the Tate, and that's not the Tate Modern. I've been to it twice and I don't know that I'd go again. <laughs> you know, but, uh, what are the deficiencies of the Assembly uh, as a chamber, etc.? What is it that uh, disappoints you about Parliament buildings, the Assembly, uh, as an edifice, as a sort of... One of the things, one of the th is first general comment, politics in Northern Ireland are too polite. Uh, now, if you, if you <coughs> compare what happens in the Assembly with the atmosphere in the House of Commons, House of Commons is, is, is louder, uh, it's, it's more uh, raucous, it's more aggressive. You know, when the, when, the house, when the House Commons starts going, particularly if it ever senses any weakness in, in people there, you'll, you'll suddenly you'll, you'll see a huge sort of you know, change in the atmosphere and all the rest of it. But uh, the Assembly, no. How do you regard John Allardyce, the Speaker? Uh, what sort of a job do you think he's done? I think John's very uh, anxious to... Uh, Ensure order and decorum, you know, and this this may be you know part of what I had in mind when I'm saying that the politics here are too polite. Uh, maybe he felt it was necessary to to keep within you know uh, a, 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 a maintain a certain degree you know very significant degree of control over it because of fear as to what would happen if passions got too strong. That's it's because. You know, it's because we have uh, a, a violent society that we have polite politics. <laughs> yeah. Politics is actually supposed to be the substitute for, for violence. Mm -hmm. Because we have violence, then we have polite politics. Yeah. And when you get to a situation where we don't have violence, then you'll have less polite politics. Mm -hmm. One second, can I just have you stand just for a couple minutes? Yep. To hear you saying that politicians here in the chamber and the assembly are too polite might come as something of a shock to the public out there who think that they're constantly at each other's throat in a very sectarian, uh, bigoted way. Like that doesn't that. actually happen terribly often, as you know. Uh, it, 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 you get outbreaks of it. Uh, uh, the outbreaks you get are usually from, uh, you know, the DUP, uh, and they they just make a lot of noise, you know. Well, David, how would you like to be remembered? That's a nice question. I'm sure you thought about it, you know. Not seriously, actually. You know, um, you know, what has posterity ever done for me? Questions to the Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety. 
Ms. Barbara De Bruyne. I call Patricia Loosley. Ms. Loosley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question number one, please. Jan Corla, are you to service you now? Her left to Snick Curry. Boards launching a service social to Mark Lineke, General to Ginecolia. Neil San Ola Surveyor File, Module and Hamana Fehel to Lineke. Now, for her left to General to Mark Hamana. Do you miss uh, other women or a greater number of women w within the Assembly? Strangely enough, what I miss more is Irish speakers. The fact that it's not an Irish speaking environment, because I came prior to the, the, the talks, I came from being a teacher in an Irish medium secondary school. So the things that I noticed when I moved across weren't even so much. The, the male-female imbalance was one of them, but the other was that to go into a very formal, very cold English-speaking environment, suits, men, it was just extremely diff different and yeah. quite difficult, but, but like everything else, you, ad you adapt very quickly. Uh, are you an emotional person or are you just very cold and clinical as perceived by so many people? If as a minister um, I'm speaking around questions to do with health or social services, then very often it's, it's something that's bordering on the tragic. So I'm clearly not going to be smiling and laughing most, most of the time. But also I suppose it's, it's because some of the things that I'm dealing with are, are so emotional that, uh, that I would keep myself in check. But yes, people have said that it, it comes across as being very, uh, very cold. Can you recall any single occasion where any unionist actually ever shook hands with you? Yes, I think one, one or two, but in private, and they probably wouldn't want you even to, me to even to name them on, on TV because they're now all scurrying for cover. No, most would... Uh, would react as if the, uh, their hands were being stung and uh, none of the DUP, as I say, some mellowed slightly. They, they started off walking down the corridor trying to study the wall as you were passing them on the other side of the corridor, but then came round to at least realising that uh, they could manage to walk past you without uh, falling ill with some terrible disease. And the First Minister, David Trimble. There's no secret that, that um, from the moment we were elected, much less from the moment we became minister and first minister respectively, that he'd never shaken my hand for all of the time that the, the assembly was there. And of course we have Sinn Féin in denial. We even have Jerry Adams claiming that he was never in the IRA. I listened to Martin McGuinness the other day on the radio claiming he didn't even know whether the IRA apparatus was still in existence. They will deny, they will lie, they will... Peter Weir was in the precise position where David Trimble yes, is now, yes. but uh, David Trimble uh, actually bucked Peter Weir out this morning, and that's uh, David, Tr <laughs> David Trimble standing there. And where was he originally then? Yeah, well, David Trimble was yeah. nowhere to be seen nowhere. Uh, originally, oh, but yes, Peter yes. Weir was precisely where David yes, Trimble yes, yes, uh, yes, is yes, now. Yes, yes. Do you have any difficulty at all being permanently portrayed in a portrait which is inclusive of this nature with so many <laughs> dominant uh, national Sinn Féin Republicans, so-called in your part of Sinn Féin IRA personnel? Well, you, you suggest we should airbrush them out as if they were never in the assembly. Well, I'm quite happy to take a big dot of a white paint and over some of these figures. The fact that they're there, yes, they were there. We were there. We took our position, represented our people, but it didn't mean to say that we engaged with these people directly because, well, although we did engage with many nationalists and so on, but there's a difference with Sinn Féin because they're, 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 they're links to the IRA. Now, you know, that's what puts them apart from other political parties. What you will not find, it wouldn't be accurate, of course, would be to betray myself or colleagues in conversation with, 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 with Sinn Féin or so on. 
Is it something I've said? <laughs> no, it's something I did. <laughs> what? Something I done. I think the conversation about the high rate don't bring out the best in any models. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Does it get too serious? Yes. What this assembly will become is not just a talking shop about, about our past, but a shouting shop about our past, drawing up that past that we want to leave behind us, because we all know the terrible price that all sections of our people have paid for that past. Now we have the challenge before us to create the new beginning. John Hume was my most perfect model because he didn't speak while I painted him. So he was absolutely perfect. And I wish more were like him because most of these politicians talked and they talked and they talked which meant that it was harder to paint them. So if I could have 117 John Humes, it would have made this painting much easier. John Hume was never the greatest player within this assembly. He was a, a great figure in getting the assembly to where it is through the last 30 years of and wanting talks. But he was not a person you would see from day to day sitting, debating and being in committees. It's just not his style. So I kind of seen it that he was sort of on a way leaving and looking back over an achievement, which he must be quite proud of. And then somehow I wanted a reflective John Hume. Is there any water in here? Hmm. To take a tablet, I think. I know that we're not out of the woods politically here, yeah. but do you feel that well, I think things that, have moved a long way? Well, I think there's no doubt about that. The atmosphere has changed enormously. You know, you just walk the streets of Derry at the minute, I mean, you're in a completely different place, you know. The atmosphere is top class. Do you feel your work was done with the advent of the Assembly and the Good Friday Agreement, which? Uh, spawned uh, the assembly? Well, of course, uh, I think when you look back over the years, our strategy was based on our analysis of the problem. We have a setback at the moment, but I believe it'll be overcome. And what's very positive and very good for all sections of our people is that by putting the institutions back in place, we will be all working together, mm. all sections of our, will be working together in what are our common interests. So you're hopeful? The social, economic, uh, development of the society. I am, I am quite hopeful, yes, because the atmosphere in the streets has been changed enormously as well. And unless we have a sense of doing this together, then I think unfortunately not only will this, as John Hume says, be reduced to a shouting shop. I think it's very important that we <coughs> see today as a chance and as a possibility of making a new history. And I know that Unionists and Republicans have inflicted great hurt upon each other. I hear the cat calls from the other bench. And the gap between us isn't just the space of floor which is between us. I want to make friends with Dr. Paisley and with those who he represents. And unless we have a sense Basically, of doing this together, at the moment. Right. So all the assembly members are going to be there? 108 members will be painted right. in this portrait. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. I don't know, I would, would have all together going along with it, I have to say. Why? Back it's a bit, you know, the thing's down, it's suspended. And oh, that's a different... Here's, here's taxpayers' money going into, going into this, you know? Well, that's a different argument. You see, the commission took place during a time uh, when, the, when the assembly was sitting... Well, even, even, even for that matter. You know, even, would, would you have you opposed know. it? If it well, I floor? mean, I would need to be persuaded to tell you the truth that it's... Uh, you know, that it's a useful use of Public money. Public Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, fair enough, I know it's, it's quite a novel concept and it's actually quite interesting to see all these familiar faces yes. uh, artistically presented like this. Would it, 